We see immigration changes all the time, but they usually come through in small amounts. We saw that through the pandemic, where almost weekly we have these small changes coming through as they sort of tweak the settings into how to uh, change immigration for the situation. Now, yesterday we saw quite the opposite. We saw we see probably every you know, three or four years when we see a massive change in how immigration is going to work. Yesterday we saw three changes to the amendment circulars, uh, that's changes to the operational manual, and in total about 200 pages uh, for me to go through this morning uh, and last night to see actually what had changed for all of our clients and all of you out there. Along with that, of course, we had the Minister's uh, press release that sort of covered as to what what she was um, what she was trying to achieve from all these changes. We're going to cover that a bit today as well. Uh, we are going to have... Um, break this down by sections so there's this part that you want to go and jump to you should want to jump to uh, looking down below you'll see the various sections appearing um, otherwise well, let's get into it as always of course there is a disclaimer uh, this is not legal advice about commentary here on immigration here in New Zealand if you do want to get legal advice then please get in contact with us our email address is there along with our website happy to see how we can assist you now, there, of course, a number of announcements came through yesterday. Of course, the Minister's press release, there was changes to the operational manual. We're going to cover that. Now, operational manual, for those who uh, haven't watched my videos before, that is the, the rules immigration must stand by. If you ever hear me, uh, even my videos refer to a letter and then a number, say A4 or um, SA16, that is a reference to the operational manual. Now, don't look at the website, the immigration website, as to how things work. It's the operational manual that is important. That is what Immigration New Zealand are required to follow. So with these changes yesterday came through what we call an amendment circular. And amendment circulars are notifications to lawyers and advisors that they are changing the operational manual. And we generally get those on the day of the change or the day after the change. So very rarely are we told in advance what's going to take place. Uh, a few of these things here we did sort of see coming. Uh, that was more so just from knowing how the immigration works. But for most of them, these really did come out yesterday um, without much sort of foreknowledge. Now, of course, it's going to be a uh, look at these separately. It's changes to the accredited employer work visas. Um, looking at that by the employees, uh, the qualification uh, requirement changes. Uh, those of you are looking at level four or five skilled jobs, uh, we'll cover as to what that means in a moment. Uh, and looking at changes for employers. It's also, of course, the removal of the bus truck driver residence uh, pathway to, to work, uh, sorry, pathway to residence, uh, and the correcting of the care for care force pay change that might, many of you won't be aware of. I know one of our clients was impacted by this, and it's great to see this being fixed by immigration now if it was uh, made aware of it. And uh, the new green list roles, or what green list roles are still going to be there. Um, now, these changes will generally not apply to current applications. So if you've already applied for a visa and it's being processed, I think in mo almost all cases, these situations, these changes won't impact. The rules that were in, were in place when you made the application, that's what should be um, impacting your application as to how it goes forward from here. This is press release. Now, we're not going to uh, read through the entire thing, just sort of we'll put a link in the description so you can see it yourself. There was a statement uh, about the government focusing on attracting and retaining highly skilled migrants and at the same time they need to ensure that New Zealanders um, have jobs. Now we've seen this statement to be made generally in very similar wording from every single government for the last or long as I've been doing this. This is what we expect to see from every government. Every government of course wants to bring in skilled migrants and to make sure that Kiwis and residents have have jobs for them. So there really was uh, nothing new in that statement. Uh, there was a re return to pre-pandemic settings and this is something that we, we are seeing. We're going to cover a few of these things today. Things that were removed during the pandemic because it was just a ridiculous thing to do at the time but perhaps now we're back at a point where these, um, these settings need to be put back in place. Just because we don't want to sort of look purely at what the Minister said, we just wanted to make a note that there are some sponsors from the other parties. Um, Ricardo from the Greens says there needs to be a whole system overhaul. I know that they're uh, not a fan of the accredited employer work visa scheme. Um, and their, their, the big issue they've got is that, of course, it ties you to an employer, uh, which is you know, justifiable when it comes to exploitation. Uh, Labour's Phil Twyford, their spokesperson for, for immigration, uh, says it was a, a long way short and it was just um, the minister adjusting a few knobs. Now, 
I think it's a lot more significant that, that than that, and that was this was a fairly large change to, um, to immigration here in New Zealand, which we're going to cover now. So we're going to start with the uh, accredited employer work visa, looking at the those that are going to uh, impact a number of you, so basically generally all of you in some way. Uh, we are going to cover the level four and five changes separately now to, to just, just uh, I suppose, explain what level four and five means. We have ANSCO, you'll see the word ANSCO, uh, A-N-Z-C-O, all in capital letters, appearing later in this, I think this page or the next page. Now, ANSCO is a database of uh, jobs that New Zealand and Australia sort of got together and decided, and it was a list of probably hundreds, if not a thousand plus uh, roles, describing what each role requires, so, or what tasks you'd be doing. For example, if you're a retail manager, you could be setting prices or doing marketing. Um, it will also require also lay out what the qualifications are for that role, whether that job role requires registration, um, and if perhaps the qualification can be replaced by a certain number of years of experience. Now, included also in ANSCO will be a, uh, a skill level, one through five. Now, one, two, and three are considered skilled roles, and four and five are considered unskilled roles. Uh, no offense to those who have those jobs, that's just the term that's been uh, used for many, many years. Um, the Up until Recently, if you go for an accredited employee work visa, um, it's all based on how much you're getting paid. The actual skill level of the job didn't really matter. Now, pre-pandemic, and see this is back to changing back to the pre-pandemic settings, pre-pandemic, your skill level actually made a difference as to how long your visa was going to be for. So that was removed during the pandemic when they sort of just opened it up. So that's bringing, being brought back in again where the uh, level four or five jobs, which are jobs that people generally consider, well, immigration does, that these are jobs that people could be relatively easily trained to do. These are jobs at the skill level four or five, and they can go to New Zealanders uh, who are unemployed rather than bringing in migrants from offshore who probably do a, a much better job actually doing it. So that's what the level four and five thing is. We're going to cover um, what impact it has on those jobs in a moment, but for now we're just going to um, go through the more generic changes. Um, now, they said these... Uh, come through as amendment circulars um, 2024, uh, 6, 7 and 8. We will link to these um, down below if we can. What we can do though is these amendment circulars are actually already in the operational manual. Now the operational manual generally will take weeks to not if not a month to actually show these changes. Immigration has been very good recently to make these changes available almost instantly on the operational manual so you can see right now uh, what the current law is rather than what the law was with these two factored things and we will link to that so you can see it if you go to any particular page in the, on the operational manual look at the bottom you'll be able to see a historical versions of that page so you can see the changes that were made and the date that those changes were made uh, it's handy to see how things have have happened over the last uh, few months I uh, said ANSCO is now important again, uh, as we'll see more through this as to uh, the difference between skill level 1, 2, 3, as well as 4 and 5, and how they differ. There is a maximum time in New Zealand before stand down. This has, has been in place a little, little while now, and it basically means that this is as long as you can be here on uh, one of these accredited employer work visas before you must leave the country for 12 months before you can get another one of these work visas. Those who uh, so there's a five year stance, five year uh, maximum time in New Zealand for stand down for um, yeah for those doing skill one two and three AW visas a five year visa from that anyway green list on the green list you get a five year visa uh, care workforce and earning twenty eight twenty five currently which is the, the the legal requirement for level four there's a three year visa but you get a five year maximum allowance uh, one and a half times median wage five years transport sector five years again if you're earning at least the median wage. There's a three-year uh, maximum period for those who are in skill levels four and five um, with a two-year visa and the seasonal snow and adventure tourism, which is a seven-month visa, but you can get multiple ones of them up to 36 months in total. Now, you can get a new accredited employee work visa for the remainder if your current visa 
doesn't meet the full maximum time allowance. So for example, if you were to be going for a skill level four and five uh, AWV, and it's a two year visa, but there's a three year maximum period, it means that at the end of that two year period, you can apply with the same job check number for the additional one year. No requirement for the employer to re-advertise that ro uh, role, unless there isn't in the current instructions, you can just apply and get that extra one year visa. Now qualifications. Um, I mentioned before that ANSCO has the um, has a requirement for every role that it's what's required to do the role. That could be in qualifications or um, and or experience, or it could be experience replacing the qualifications. So, for example, the job may require a bachelor's degree, uh, but that can be replaced by say three years of relevant work experience or five years of relevant work experience. Depends on what the uh, the job is. The ANSCO could also state as to what. Um, registration is required, so for a lawyer, you're required to be registered with the Law Society. It can also also state the skill level, the one, two, three, four, five that we've mentioned already. Now, this qualification requirement is different to the ANSCO one, and it sets down a minimum skills and experience requirement for every application uh, under a credit employee work visa, no matter what job they are applying applying for. There are some exceptions which we will come to. Uh, and it's in addition to ANSCO requirements. So you can meet ANSCO, but you may not be meeting this. You must meet both ANSCO and this. Um, now, the requirement is either three years relevant work experience or a relevant level four or higher NZQA qualification. Now, relevant there, of course, means that it is um, linked to or associated with, associated with your job. So um, if it's three years work experience in the job that you're applying for, then, then great, that's relevant. If it's completely different, different, different um, industry, then relevance is not going to be a, an issue. Uh, not going to be um, allowed there because it's not going to be relevant. Um, now, in regards to the NZQA as qualification, it must be NZQA assessed if not from New Zealand or an exempt list. Now, chances of being on the exempt list is relatively rare because that's going to be uh, a bachelor's degree or higher. And bachelor's degrees and higher do not need to be assessed. So, if you have a bachelor's degree or higher, then it is not, not required to be NZQA assessed, they will take that as being um, a, a level four or higher qualification. Remember that NZQA assessment is something you have to apply for, it does cost uh, money to get done, and you need to have that done before you make the application for AWV. So those of you who are applying shortly or applying um, soon to coming up, get the NZQA assessment process underway now. Um, bachelor's degree and higher are considered relevant to all. So if you have a bachelor's degree or higher, you're not required to get them assessed by NZQA, at least not for AWV, for this qualification requirement. And they are considered to be relevant no matter what the job you're going to. So if, you, if you've done a um, bachelor's degree in, in bioscience and you're going to go run a um, supermarket, that's okay. A bachelor's degree is considered to be relevant, at least in regards to this qualifications requirement. As I said, it's in addition to NZQA requirements, which you have to meet as well separately. Uh, alternate required for the green list roles and those who are paying, you're getting paid two times the median wage. So if you're on in a, a green list role, and of course if you are, you're probably already looking at um, residency, through straight to residency or work to residency, uh, or those paying, getting paid two times the median wage, then you're not required to meet this uh, minimum skills and experience requirement. Now those you're looking at applying for a level four or five um, ANSCO rated role for AWV is a maximum of three years onshore with a two year visa. As we said before, you can then apply uh, for the additional one year after you've done those two years or you're only working finishing those two years. Uh, you must have IELTS 4.0 or higher or the equivalent. You need to be able to show that. Uh, and that means a, a test within the last two years for, for IELTS or for PTE or the other, the other ones. There's a list there of the, the numbers you must have from either, any, any of those tests. Um, now, many of these roles, especially level five, can are considered to be roles that anyone can be trained to do. So they're one of those ones where if the your employer advertises the roles and New Zealand citizens or residents apply, they're the ones who generally should be given the role. As it can be difficult to, to justify as to why they haven't been given the role because they're, they're jobs that anyone can be trained to do. Now this does create issues when you're looking at so say, supervisors in certain roles. Uh, we had one person who, um, it was in the construction industry, the role was considered to be a level five job, but his job was to effectively monitor and train people in that role. 
there was no better um, ANSCO code, no better job for us to use for him. But immigration had difficulty justifying as to why this person who was earning double the median wage, um, they couldn't just give that job to somebody else who wasn't trained. In fact, that he was trained these people, they seem to be lost on them. So this is probably something that we're going to see again when there is no no jobs there to cover the, the people who train and manage these low level f um, level five skilled jobs. Uh, employer, now there is a lot of employer changes. We're going to cover just a couple of them today, but one of the, um, for the largest of the three amendment circulars was all about employer changes. So if you are an employer, definitely come see us. Make sure that you're doing this correctly because it's going to cause you mayhem if you don't do it right. Um, there is an obligation to notify Immigration New Zealand of an employment ending within 10 working days. Uh, unless, of course, it's in the last month of the visa. Now, this falls on the employer. Up until now, it's generally been on the employee to notify Immigration about a change in circumstance. There's now a requirement on the employer to notify this. Uh, and if you don't, you could be uh, in trouble. It's also the obligation to check the applicant is suitably qualified and meets that minimum skills thresholds, all these requirements that are coming through now, that's on the employer. Quite often the employer will do this anyway as part of the general um, hiring process, but immigration are pushing it onto the employer to make sure these things are done. Um, and can have the accreditation suspended uh, if there's evidence of non-compliance with the accreditation requirement. This has been extended out to rather than sort of confirmation. It's, up till now it's been more around um, employment requirements not being met. Now it's going back more into the accreditation requirements which are different to the employment ones and these are um, things which a lot of employers haven't thought about in the past but they are having to. So there's now this requirement that you can have your accreditation suspended um, on evidence of non-compliance. Um, and yes, the, this is the probably one of the larger ones, which is probably good, actually I'm glad to see this, that they can revoke accreditation if employers are not provided, um, and if employees are not provided with at least 30 hours of work. So if somebody is, uh, is hired and they're promised 30 hours of work, and we've seen it so many times in the news, where they are found with no work and they're sitting around doing nothing, um, the employer has it to some degree in the past to sort of you know, try to wash their hands of it. This will actually revoke the accreditation if they do not provide that 30 hours of work. It's on the employer to provide the work from the work agreement. That's not the employee who's um, basically to suffer from that. So that's one of the best changes we've seen coming through from this, and I hope immigration stick to it and um, enforce it you know, strictly. And this was going back again to the pre-pandemic thing. So with the old essential skills work visa, there was a requirement to check with work and income who are the ones who deal with those who are unemployed in New Zealand, to talk to them and say, hey, is anybody available for these lower skilled roles? That requirement has now come back. It must be advertised with, them, with um, working income for at least 21 days. Unless the working income say, no, there's nobody here to do that role, didn't bother asking, then you can skip that step. Well, you have to wait the 21 days. It can be sort of uh, speeded up. But that requirement is now there. Now, there's also a requirement uh, for those four or five uh, level roles, while you can sort of speed up the work and income uh, 21 day requirement, there's also a requirement for a 21 day of advertising uh, in general for that role. So generally it's, uh, it's requires 14 days of advertisement for most ANSCO roles. With level four and five roles, it's 21 days. So uh, three weeks rather than two weeks where the job must be advertised you know, um, to New Zealand or to the local local area. Typically we'll see, you know, trade me, seek, indeed, something like that. Uh, and there we go. Yeah, must advertise uh, for 21 days minimum, uh, both with work and income, unless they, they say it's okay, and then also just in general to meet the uh, labour market test. Now here's one of the big ones that we, we saw this coming um, at some point. This doesn't really surprise us. And I've been telling clients recently who, uh, who asked about this, this visa that we can't see it lasting much longer. Actually, that to a client last week, and then here we go, we see it being removed. This, of course, was brought in um, when there was a mass shortage of bus drivers, truck drivers. You'd see um, school buses not running, you'd have trucks backed up. So there was a need to bring in uh, more staff, and from what I hear, there's been thousands of staff brought into the country um, under this visa, so now they are removing it. Its purpose has been met, so it's getting take, um, being removed. Uh, it's been with most, removed for those who don't hold or hadn't applied for an AWV on or before 6 April 2024. So if you are already on your way working towards that 24 months of work experience, 
um, and you hold or have applied for an AWV, then you can continue building up that 24 months. Now, if you are on any other visa, any other work visa, and you have 24 months, then you can apply. But if you don't have 24 months and you're not on an accredited employee work visa, I'm sorry, but you cannot apply. You cannot um, continue with, with this process uh, unless your current visa goes out far enough. I know I had one inquiry from someone who whose um, current visa, open, open uh, partnership work visa, wasn't going to long, uh, run long enough for them to, to do this, and it's going to be difficult for them to reach uh, to meet this requirement. So it's one of the ones we're still sort of going through the fine details of. It's not particularly well written, and the way they've removed it, they've sort of removed it, but they've removed it, but sort of with an asterisk, without, without being completely clear as to how it's going to work for those who are already on their way. Um, so if you do have a situation that you're in like that, definitely come and speak to us. So we can look at your details in particular because it's going to change between applicants as to how it's going to apply. But at least for for those of you who are or aren't already on the process um, going for this this bus or uh, truck driver, the transport sector, path of residence, uh, if you're not already on the process, then you're not to be able to get onto it now. Still available for the ships, masters, and deckhands. Um, this is uh, the tra travel transport sector, but no longer available for bus or truck driver. Um, said those who had or did can continue with the residence application after two years qualifying experience, so you can keep going if you're already on there. But for many, you're going to have an issue. As I said, come and speak to us if you're not quite sure, because to tell the honest truth, we're not 100% sure either. It is just that poorly worded. Um, now this does include those who had either started to count work uh, before 7th of April, so if you're on uh, already started work and you're on a valid work visa type, uh, or had applied for an AWV on or before uh, 6th of April. So those are sort of two that you can be in there. You can still go with this if you are on another visa type, but you're gonna be uh, valid for 24 months. You're just gonna have difficulty uh, getting another visa to, to finish it off if you haven't got 24 months. And this was the wording they've now put in to there um, to sort of try to clarify things. Uh, this is in relation to the pay levels. Now we're going to cover this slightly um, in more detail with the care sector, but what they're generally saying is there is no requirement to maintain pace with the median wage as long as the uh, the income when you got granted the your visa was at or above median wage and you maintain that pay level, you have not decreased that pay level, then they should count those months of experience as being experienced towards the 24 months. Um, this has probably been braced because, as I said, this is not well drafted, so they've had to, to provide this clarification. Now, this is the change to the care workforce um, payment requirements. This was correcting uh, an earlier change, so as we see this here uh, quickly, uh, 9 October 2023, it was coming down to being paid at least a level 4 rate, which is a government set rate, set by legislation. Um, 28th of February, they decided to make it 28.25, which is the most recent rate, but that sort of cut out for a number of applicants uh, almost a year of work experience. Uh, and then 7th of April, they sort of changed it to looking at this, this date range thing. Now, those date ranges that actually they've got in there are the level four rates that we have the 9th of October. So it's basically gone round in a circle back to where we started, but it does at least um, show that a correction to them making a mistake, which is, which is good to see. It just seems to be overcomplicating what could be just, what was already a very simple way to look at it. Level four rate is legislation set, set by government. Everyone in that area, in that working in that, that area, uh, knows what level four rate is. This seems to make it just a, a bit more complicated. Looking now at the new green list roles. Now, this was, there was a 20th of September last year, there was, they announced there'd be 17 new roles added to the green list in March 2024. Um, they included all of these roles. So, a bunch of different roles there. Um, and people, of course, saw these and thought, okay, great. I can apply for a residence uh, come March next year, or more likely than I said at the time, more likely to be um, when you get March next year, you have to show two years of work experience, but it'll be a big, you know, green list level uh, tier two roles. Um, of course, you know, we sort of waited for March, and then on the 38th of March, uh, or the April 7th as we usually call it, um, they cancelled 11 of them. 
uh, with only six of them remaining. So the minister has decided that those 11 uh, are no longer uh, re required. So despite the fact that there was this, this what I promised, but a, uh, a statement by Immigration New Zealand that's been over overruled now, um, they have added sterilization technician to the list, which wasn't originally in the original 17. Uh, but you do have ones like you know the those regarding to uh, welding, to fitting, um, panel beating, vehicle painting, that sort of stuff. These are no longer um, going to be added to the green list. Uh, they have, however, added a uh, corrections officer, which is fantastic to see. Um, we'll say here though, just quickly, we'll go uh, yeah, each uh, of these new requirements will have requirements that must be met. So there'll actually be a listing in the green tier as to, to apply for this role. It's not just you hold that job, but you must meet uh, A, B, C, or D, or perhaps all four of them. And it'll be very clear that these things must be met. If you do not meet them clearly, you will not be on the green list. Uh, for example, corrections officer, at the time of the application um, for residence, has completed the corrections officer development pathway, the COGP, and holds a New Zealand certificate level three or higher, uh, which includes the knowledge and credit requirements of the NZ certificate in offender management, NZCOM. So if a corrections officer has a job in corrections as an, as an officer and has both of those things, then they have a shot here at applying for the green list uh, tier two, two, two years of experience before you can apply. If they don't have either of those, they cannot apply under the green list. It's very, very strict. And that is it. That is uh, the entire number of changes. Well, these are the changes we thought that were important enough to raise with you to get an idea as to, to what has taken place yesterday. There is a lot of detail we haven't covered because this is, would otherwise be uh, two or three hours of me speaking and lots of it is not that interesting. Um, but we wanted to cover the ones we thought would probably be the most important to those of you out there. Uh, happy to answer any questions you're going to have. You can contact with us. We do have the, um, the very beginning. We had our uh, email address, our website. Um, and otherwise, we'll come back to you with more information when we have it coming through. We try to get more videos out now, but things are starting to settle down here at the new firm. Uh, I've got a great team working here for me, uh, an ever-growing team. And uh, if you need help with your immigration, please come along and see us, you or your employer or anybody else we can assist with. Until then, kia kaha, stay safe.